Hello again, and welcome to Advanced Physics for High School Students. This is Lesson 76, and it is entitled Ideal Fluids, Flow Rate, and the Continuity Equation. Our discussion of fluids this far has focused on hydrostatics, fluids at rest. Developing ideas of fluid pressure, both gauge pressure and absolute pressure, Pascal's principle, fluids which are enclosed in a vessel, and Archimedes principle with its ideas of buoyancy. In this lesson, we'll begin to allow fluids to move, introducing the start of our study of hydrodynamics. Theoretically, fluid flow is a difficult topic to model, and in this course, we'll only focus on ideal fluids undergoing laminar flow, meaning that our fluids will have no viscosity or internal friction, and they won't be moving too fast so that all the parts of the fluid flow in what are called streamlines. These diagrams illustrate fluid flow. On the left, the cross section of a wing shows both laminar and turbulent fluid flow. The diagram on the right shows a narrowing of the container surrounding a moving fluid with the streamlines squeezing closer together in the restriction. We'll come to see that the closer together the streamlines are, the faster the fluid is flowing. We'll focus in this lesson on incompressible liquids, another idealization, which, unlike gases, don't change their volumes when pressure changes occur. Your authors summarize these idealizations in the text. We begin the mathematics of fluid flow with a statement of the principle of conservation of matter. The rate at which a fluid flows into a pipe equals the rate at which the fluid flows out of the same pipe. In equation form, we define this flow rate to be symbolized by the letter capital R. That flow rate is going to be equal to the volume per time of a fluid that passes a given point in a pipe. For example, if I'm going canoeing on the Hawassi River, which is one of my favorite streams, I'll check TVA's website for the discharge rate through the generators from Appalachia Dam, a number that TVA reports in terms of cubic feet per second. If the generators aren't running, there's no point in floating the river because the water level will be too low. Other flow rates may be reported in gallons per minute or milliliters per hour, say in the case of intravenous fluids administered to a patient in the hospital, or some other volume per time. Practically speaking, fluids are going to be flowing in a pipe or a stream bed of some sort that contains the fluid. The container may change its shape, either due to natural or engineered effects, so the speed at which the fluid flows through the container will also change. In other words, how many meters per second or how much distance per time is covered. It will change depending on the contour of the stream bed. The narrower the constriction, the faster the fluid has to flow to keep moving with the same volume flow rate throughout the pipe. Here's an animation to show what I mean. These particles represent particles of a fluid flowing in a pipe. And the pipe right now basically looks like the cross section of a rectangle. But I can take these yellow boxes and change the size of the pipe. So I can make the pipe smaller or I can make the pipe bigger at certain areas. So now if you look at how fast the fluid is flowing, you can see that where the area, the cross-sectional area of the container is large, the fluid is going to flow at a small velocity. Whereas where the cross-section of the fluid is small, the fluid is going to flow at a higher velocity. These narrowings or widenings occur when the cross-sectional area A of the pipe is changed from one place or another in the system. Suppose I have a cylindrical pipe. On the left side I have a small cylinder. Let's take a look at a cylinder of fluid in this pipe. Fluids coming into the pipe and a volume in a small interval of time, let me call it delta T, is equal to the volume of that small cylinder, pi r squared times z1, where z1 is the height of that small cylinder that's there. 
the volume flow rate R1 or Rn is going to be the volume per time that flows in which is going to be equal to pi r squared times z1 divided by the time interval. Now I see that this pi r squared is equal to the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. So I can write the flow rate as pi r squared times z divided by delta t. But this z divided by delta t is the speed with which fluid is moving through the pipe. How many meters per second? And the pi r squared is equal to the area of the cylinder. So the flow rate is equal to the area times the speed at which the fluid moves. I could play the same game with the larger cylinder. If I look at this green cylinder here that's in the larger part of the pipe, I could say that the flow rate that's going out is going to be equal to the volume that's going out divided by the time it takes for that volume to leave. Well, what is that volume? Well, it's going to be pi times R2 squared times Z2, in other words, the volume of that cylinder divided by the time, which is going to be pi R2 squared times Z2 divided by delta T, but that pi r2 squared is the area of the cylinder, of the face of the cylinder, and the delta z delta t is equal to the speed. So my flow rate out is going to be given by the area times the speed at which the fluid flows out. And now this principle of conservation of mass says that those flow rates are equal to each other. So let me rewrite that. The flow rate in is equal to the flow rate out, so the area of the input times the speed at which the fluid is moving in the input is equal to the area of the output times the speed of the output. This equation is sometimes known as the continuity equation. And it's this equation that you're going to use to solve several of the problems. Let's work a couple of examples. Example 76.1. A fluid is pumped into a pipe at a flow rate of 80 cubic centimeters per second. If the diameter of the pipe is 1.4 centimeters, what is the average speed of the fluid at this point? This flow rate of 80 cubic centimeters per second is R, and since R is equal to the area times the speed, then we can figure out what the speed is because we're told what the diameter is. The diameter of the pipe is 1.4 centimeters. The radius is half of the diameter, so that's going to be 0.7 centimeters. I could rewrite the flow rate, r is equal to pi r squared times v, because a is the area. So since I know what r is and I know what little r is, the flow rate and the radius, I can solve that equation for v. And now let's substitute some numbers and put them into our calculator. I find that the average speed of this fluid is 52 centimeters per second at this point. Let's go to the next problem, 76.2. The radius of a fluid carrying pipe at a certain point is 2 centimeters, and the average speed of the fluid is 14 centimeters per second. What is the average speed of the fluid at a point where the radius is only 1.3 centimeters? Let's sketch a diagram of the situation. Whatever comes in has got to go out at the same rate, and the volume flow rate R in is equal to the volume flow rate R out. In, I have the area of the input times the speed of the fluid in the input side, that's got to be equal to the area of the output times the speed on the output side. I'm told what the radius of the pipes are, and if these are cylindrical pipes, then we can say pi r squared is the cross-sectional area of the face of the pipes. We know what the speed on the input side is. That's 14 centimeters per second. We're looking for the speed on the output side. So solve this equation for the output speed. And substitute the variables that we know. It looks like I'm going to have a couple of pies that cancel. And now let's substitute numbers in. And now put those numbers into the calculator. I end up that the output speed is just over 33 centimeters per second. To summarize, we're dealing with ideal fluids. Your text on page 721 gives a summary of the ideal fluid. It is non-viscous, meaning there's no internal friction. The density of the fluid is constant. It's incompressible. The motion of the fluid is steady. We do not have turbulent flow. We don't have any bubbles forming inside our fluid. 
we have developed the continuity equation for fluids flowing in pipes. The continuity of equation says that the flow rate in is equal to the flow rate out and the flow rate is equal to the area times the speed. For now, that's it.